Hey everybody, this is Mark Bunting, the lead pastor of Emmanuel Church here in Salisbury. And I want to welcome you and thank you so much for joining us for our online church platform today. It's so good to have you. Hey, listen, our mission here at Emmanuel is to engage everyone everywhere. And one of the greatest ways that you can help us do that is by participating with the online chat today. We have our eChurch volunteers ready to pray for you, uh, ready to talk with you, ready to see how we can best connect with you. So make sure you participate on the online experience today. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great experience. As we wind down this series called I Got Issues, have you got any help on your issues over the last four weeks? Come on, somebody. Only about three of you. You gotten any help over the last few weeks? We hope you have as we've been looking at our issues. Matthew chapter 6 is where we're going to land today as we, as we finish out this series. Today we're going to be dealing with an issue that we all deal with. Today we're going to be talking about anxiety. Today we're going to be talking about fear. We're going to be talking about worry. And I know it might not apply to many of us today. But I'm talking about some real folk that have been living in our culture over the last year in the midst of a pandemic that can be real people in this place today uh, and put the persona on the side and say, come on, there's been times over the last year, come on, 365, matter of fact, to to be complete on it all, where I felt a sense of anxiety, worry, or fear, and I've asked God to help me in it. And that's what we're going to dive into today is ask God to get in the middle of the worry and the anxiety and the fear that we all face. So over in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 6, lucky for us, God's Word deals with it. And we sang a little bit about it today. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Are you ready? It says this, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life. How many wish you had all that time back you spent on worrying? Anybody lived through a situation and when you got to the end of it, you said, why was I so worried? Why did I stay up at night for so long? Why was I staring at the ceiling when God had already worked it out? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the lilies of the field, they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run around after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all of these other things will be given to you as well. The title of my message over the next few minutes is this. I got options. Come on, look at your neighbor to your left and to your right and tell them, I got some options. And let's pray together. Father, thank you, Holy Spirit, for what we have felt already in this place today. And God, we are asking for you to settle down on us, Holy Spirit. Do business inside of our hearts. We realize that this is a deep subject, a deep topic today as we deal with anxiety and worry and fear, which we all face. And so, Father, we ask that you would do business inside of our hearts today. May we hear from you and may we be changed in Jesus' name. And all God's people said... Come on, and all God's people said, while you're standing, give it up for the worship team. They lead us so well every single week. We appreciate them. And then you may be seated this morning. Everybody say options. One more time, say options. 
How many realize that we live in a culture in a day and age that has total options that have been all laid out on the table before us? How many believe that? I mean, anything you ever want in the culture and the society in which we live in today, there's all kinds of options. I remember just a few months ago, my wife was, I shouldn't call it complaining, but can I call it complaining? Frustrated. There's an even better word. She is frustrated about grocery shopping. And I understand because grocery shopping is not exactly the funnest thing to do in the world. Who wants, who, who gets excited? Yes, today I get to go grocery shopping. Nobody does that. Especially when you are trying to buy groceries for seven people. Seven people and five kids, trying to feed five kids and a husband. It's, it's difficult. Now, I would go to the grocery store if I actually knew what I was doing, but I have absolutely no clue. And so, uh, most of the time when I do go to the grocery store, I end up calling her because I don't even know where anything's at. So, she said, you know what? Don't even buy Just let me do it. And uh, it can be frustrating at times. And as she was complaining or frustrating to one of her friends about going to the grocery store, how much time it takes. You got to get a cart. You got to push it around. You got to find the best deals all around the place. Her friend said, have you considered other options? What are you talking about other options? Well, there is a particular place in town where if you download the app, you don't have to stand in line. You can go online. Have you seen this? And you can actually do your grocery shopping online. You can go and pick out all the things that you want out of all the options, place your order, pull up to a parking space, call them to let them know that you are there, and they'll bring your groceries out to you. Have you seen this? Anybody do this? Sounds too good to be true, and we tried it, and it's amazing. It's incredible to get on the app and push all the stuff that you want and then just pull up in line, call the number, and they bring it right out to you because it is an option that we never considered in our life, but it's, it's life-changing. I mean, there's all kinds of options in life when we, when we, when we look at it. I mean, it used to be a day and time where if you wanted anything, you had to go down to the store. Isn't it true? And then there was a small website that came out. This, what is it called? Amazon? You ever heard of it before? Come on, some of y'all want, go in debt because of Amazon. Come on. You got Amazon Prime. You are addicted. Maybe I should talk about addictions. Talk about your Amazon Prime account that is sending you in debt. But anyway... You no longer, it used to be a day and age, what you saw on the rack, what you see in the bin is the only options that you consider until you go to Amazon.com, baby, and there's every option or possibility that you can consider all within the click of a button or at your fingertips. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hey, how many love the option when Chick-fil-A remodeled and they got two lines? Oh, Lord, gee, I, when Chick-fil-A had one line, how many know that line was back all the way up to Lowe's on 13? But when they remodeled and they got two lines, I said, hey, now I got, I got options. And the thing I have to worry about the most is not what I'm going to order. It's which line am I going to get into? Matter of fact, can I just say this? How about we turn our government over to Chick-fil-A? Can we do that? Because I guarantee you, they can find, forget the Republicans or Democrats. Can we have Chick-fil-A run our government to figure some things so we got some more options? It'd go a lot quicker and a lot smoother and a lot easier, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> we got options. Somebody say options. Can I propose to you today that much of our worry, much of our anxiety, must, much of our frustration out of our own fear is because we, in our own minds, have come up with this preconceived notion or what we perceive to be no other options. When we look at where we are at in life, it seems limited. There is no availability or accessibility to whatever I face or whatever I'm feeling in life. And consequently, there is this sense of fear that comes over you because the state of 
of mind we are in has automatically come to a conclusion that there is no other options to consider. There's nothing else to be laid out on the table. As I look at my life, there is no Amazon.com. There is no Chick-fil-A line. There is no app on my phone. I've run out of options to consider, and this is the end, and I'm going down. Oh my gosh, I got my kid's report card, and they got to see what is going to happen. I mean, their college, even though they're in third grade, the colleges are limited at this point. I don't see any doubt. What are we going to do? We better call a tutor tomorrow because they're going to fail. And where are they going to be? I don't know. So, uh, there's no other options. Oh my goodness, my boss wants to talk to me tomorrow. Where, what is he going to say? I'm going to lose my job. And then what am I going to do in the economy? I'm getting, what am I going to find a job? I got a job. Blah, 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 blah. There's no other options to what I fear facing because of the mindset that we have. We have not perceived what else could be available, and the consequences with that is an overwhelming fear or anxiety because life seems limited. But can I propose to you once again that maybe in this life, maybe it is not the situation that you are facing that has limited you. Maybe it is your own mindset of what you perceive to be a lack of options that limits you. Hey, my word for somebody today is this. You got options. You got something else to consider. This is what Jesus is saying over in Matthew chapter 6 on a passage of Scripture that we have seen so many times. It may be our go-to in times of life where we feel limited to get some sense of, of peace on the inside. But there is a deeper depth in the context that some of us don't get that maybe will help us with some of the fears or the anxieties we are facing. Jesus is saying... In Matthew 6, he's, he's speaking on fear. He's speaking on anxiety. He's talking about worry. And he says six words that are amazing. It is a commandment, really, that he gives to us. Many of us don't even, don't even consider it a commandment, but six words, a commandment in verse 25. He says this, therefore, watch this, I tell you the truth, do not worry about your life. Somebody say six. Six words that if the six words stuck in the heart, it could transform everything. Six words that revolutionize. But then he says after six words of a commandment, then he gives us something else to consider. Now he's given a commandment. Now he's switching to something to consider. And then after six words, he gives one word that would revolutionize the way we see worry. He says in verse 26, in verse 26, he says this. He says, look, everybody say, look. It's as if Jesus is saying, I want you to look for a second at something differently in your mind. There's something else that I want you to consider. In other words, there is a different mindset that is available to you that you've never even taken the time to consider it an option. And that is a corrected mindset on the way you view or you see things that look limiting in your life. That could actually free you from your fear that you face. Because if not, you can either live in the weight of your worry, the weight of the fear, the weight of the anxiety, or you can have a corrected mindset and a view in which you should consider things that will free you from a lot of the, the fear that you face in your life. Isn't that so true? Because as I think for so many of us, we consider the wrong things. Don't we? We consider things that are incorrect. So many of us, our anxiety and fear comes from what others consider about us. Do people like us or do they not like us? Is it an option? 
Because for some people, no matter what you do, they're never gonna make, you're never going to make them happy. We consider the wrong things. We consider the wrong emotions that are incorrect. How many know you can't go by your feelings? If you went by your feelings, you'll have fear just by the indigestion you got from eating pizza last night. Come on. You're going you're to have fear based on how many cups of coffee you had this morning because the caffeine is what get, kicks in, and you consider those. They say, no, 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 you can't go, you can't go by that. You can't, you can't consider, you're considering the wrong thing. You have to have a corrected mindset, a, a different lens or film in which you view your life, something else to look that is not so limited or, because you got options. Why would you limit yourself by the way you look at things in your mind? Come on, you got to free your mind and be able to see you got options. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I got options today, because when you consider the that you got options, and that Jesus saying you got to operate your life within this corrected view, viewpoint of what you consider in your life. If you can ever correct the mindset, the viewpoint in your life, you'll see that, that there is so much more out there that I've not even considered. I've never even grabbed a hold of it because my mindset has limited. Now, please, please hear me when I talk about this. This does not mean that you will never face fear, or you're never going to have the feeling of it, or you're never going to have that anxiety. So don't listen to this message. Go to your primary care doctor and says, take me off all the medication. Because Pastor Dunn said that, that I don't need to fear. Because all of us, no matter what different levels it is, many of us uh, seek help and you need to because it's a good thing. But I'm talking about the surface level fear or anxiety that we all deal with in life. We're all going to go through it. There is nothing wrong with feeling this sense from time to time. But please hear me. There is a big difference between a genuine concern and an overwhelming fear. And that's where many of us see our lives is something so big or so overwhelming, it has consumed us so we can't consider any other options. So Jesus has given a way in which we should view the lens of how we look at things to change the perspective of how we see our lives so that we don't fall into the trap of our anxiety or our fear. Jesus says it this way in verse 26. I love what he says. In verse 26, he says this. He says, look, everybody say, look. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you much more valuable than these? Jesus says it this way. Look up. Everybody say, look up. He says, look up. Look at the birds above you. Now, the birds above you, they don't fear where their food is going to come from. It's because they already know that the Father above them is going to feed them. Now, have you ever considered that if God provides for the birds above, why would God not provide for his only children? What he's trying to say is, I am the source of your supply. That's the first thing I want to talk to you about is look above. Everybody say, look above. Much of the source of our anxiety, the source of our fear, the source of our worry comes from when we lose sight of the source of our supply. We are overwhelmed with fear, overwhelmed with worry, because as we look around at our situation, all we see is the lack, all we see is small portion, all we see is the failure of food from what we need now most right inside this very minute, and right inside this minute, uh, this moment, and as we do that, there is this fear that comes over our life as we look around. But the truth is today that what you need for your need is not around you. What you need for your need is up above you. What I'm trying to say is food for the need is not in front of you. Food 
for your need comes from up above you. Let me make it down even simpler. You got to look up. Everybody say, look up. Because he is the source of our supply. And what most of us don't see it, because you stopped looking up above you, and you started looking around down beneath you. But the Bible tells me in James chapter 1, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. God is the source of our supply. God is above you watching over all things. You don't have to panic about your provision. You don't have to panic about your portion because if he feeds the birds above you, how much more would our God possibly provide for his own children? The last time I checked, I'm better than a bird, y'all. He put a purpose inside of my life. And if the birds are flying around and they got their provision met and they're living in their purpose, how much more will God's own creation be? Man, the breath of God, God put breath inside of our lungs. Why would I worry about the provision for my life? Because God already provides it. But I got to look up. Everybody say, look up. If he helps the birds above, God's going to help me down below. Come on, somebody. It reminds me of the scripture over in 1 Kings. Oh, man, I feel like preaching now. I feel like preaching now. Oh, my goodness. 1 Kings chapter 17. I love this. Don't put it on the screen yet. 1 Kings chapter 17. It reminds me of the prophet Elijah who God picked to go proclaim the truth. And he went before the king and he told him, because of your disobedience, there is going to be a drought in the faith famine in the land. And then God gave him a word as he went before the king and told him this, God shut up the heavens like you shut off the shower. There wasn't one bit of rain, not a drop or dew, and then now there's a famine and a drought in the land. Oh my goodness, you mean to tell me how in the world is God going to send the prophet Elijah to proclaim a message of a drought because of their disobedience, and he's going to live in the repercussions of it? How's he going to eat? How's he going to have food? Have you ever considered in your life that because of other people's consequences, you got a drought or famine in your land, and now you're fearful because of the decision somebody else made? What am I going to do? How am I going to eat? Where's my food going to come from? Oh, I don't know where our economy's going. I don't know where the company's going. They made that decision, and now I'm suffering because of it in my own life. And there's a fear that comes up. What is God going to do? How's he going to provide? But God gave him a word in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. How many know that God's presence always shows up in the middle of a drought, in the middle of a season? where it looks dead around you. He always brings a word to you. Come on, somebody. And he says in verse 3, leave here. Turn eastward and hide in the Kirith Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook. Oh, my good. Good. I love this. And I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had said. And told him, he went to the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. Oh, my goodness. I love that. All Elijah had to do when he was hungry in a famine and he needed some food is look up in the morning and here comes the bird. There comes my bread. There comes my manna. I got something to eat just in the nick of time. What I'm saying is sometimes in your life, you're going to face seasons of famine and drought, and you don't even know what you're going to do or where your next bit of food or provision is going to come from. But I came to tell, man, I feel God in this place. I came to tell somebody today, look up, Elijah. Come on. Look up, because just above you, God brings the bread. God brings your provision. Don't get stuck on what is around you. But look up above you, Elijah, at the place of your provision. It might come in the form of a word to just supply for your soul in a season. Just something small to get you through. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it comes as a word of encouragement from somebody else that gives you what you need to get through another day of a drought or a season in your life. Come on. Maybe it's, it's, it's in a, by a complete stranger in the grocery store that paid for your canned goods. 
When you don't even know where you're going to, where the supply is going to come from for you to take care of it. God always provides just in the nick of time. But you got to look up. Everybody say, look up. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven. He is my portion. He is my supply. All right, sit down, sit down. Y'all pulling it out of me. Stop. I got a long way to go. He is my provision. He is my source of supply. Look up. But it's deeper. Everybody say it's deeper. It's deeper than that. Because I want you to notice something. He said, eat the food that comes from the Father. Have you ever considered, maybe, just maybe, that if you consume from food that does not come from the Father, it actually fuels your anxiety. That when you consume things from the wrong source, that it actually creates the very thing that you've been praying for God to take away. You got to be careful what you consume and take in inside of your spirit. Because when you consume the wrong thing, it will create the very thing that you don't want. Consumption either contributes to your peace or counteracts your peace. It's up to you to choose which diet that you have. Many of us wonder, why am I so worried? Why am I so anxious? Why am I so fearful? But yet all you do is consume social media and get on your news feed And consume the very thing that you're praying against and wondering, why do I feel this way? God, take the worry away. I wish I could post in response to that. Who do they think they are? Oh, I wish my life was, I'm going to set them straight. And your blood pressure is going to, and you're giving in to the very thing that you don't want. Some of us, if it isn't social media, You're feeding from the wrong people. You got the wrong friends in your life. You're feeding from the wrong. They don't feed your faith. They ain't encouraging you to tune in online or come to church every Sunday. They're trying to pull you away from the things of God. And then you're wondering, why am I so, why am I the way I, because, because you're consuming the wrong things that contribute to the very thing that you don't want. And wonder why you got this sense of anxiety or fear inside of your life. Because you're consuming the things that you don't want. No wonder you worry. Because you watch news 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We... We were not meant to consume that much information and food. Bent with an agenda, no matter what your political preference. All you're feeding is your own hate towards your brothers and sisters 
that sit in, sit in the same pew as you. But yet because of your consumption, you'll cuss them out based on... Because of our... Here's what I'm trying to say. You ready? Feed what feeds you. If God is the provider of our peace and our purpose, if he holds all things in his hand, why would I not feed on that more? And what I see on around me, feed on it less. Consume the right. Feed yourself the right diet or you're going to get fat with worry. Everybody say, look up. He says, look above. And then he goes on in verse 28, says this, and why do you, not, why do you worry about your clothes? See how, see how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, labor or spin, labor or, they don't labor and spin. Yet I tell you that not even, not even Solomon, all his splendor will be dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you Oh, you of little faith. Jesus says, look above. And then he says, look below. Look at the lilies of the field. Have you considered the flowers who do not labor or work for what's going to happen? You know why? Because God is not just above us. God is working in the middle of us. God's working in the middle of it. That's what God, that's the second thing. It's not just look above, look below. Everybody say, look below. below. Here is the truth God is not just above me, God has gone before me. God's already worked it out. God's, I said, God has already worked it out. God has already worked it out. Because God is not just glorified above me. God is also at ground level. Here's what I'm saying. God is in the middle and in the midst of whatever I'm in the middle of. So he's not just there. He's not just my provision that comes down, but he's also the presence of God that is in the midst of it with me. He's already gone before me. He's already worked it out. He's already done what I cannot. He's already seen the end from the beginning. He's in the midst of it. That is the way in which I have to look and see it and consider it. You know why? If you don't look at it that way, your mind will labor. Can I break it down real simple for you? Y'all getting anything out of this? Your mind, what I'm saying is, it's amazing what worry will do. Because worry will make your mind work. To work out and figure out all the details that are running all the time around you. It, your mind, how many know what I'm talking about? Your mind will labor and spin on a situation to work out all the different details of everything that's going to happen and what they said and what you said and how the thing and the job and the kids and all, the, all that's going to work. Worry will work you people. It will work you. Anxiety is exhausting. Anxiety is like working a full-time job. With no days off, always on call. Come on. It will labor and labor and labor and labor and labor. And here's the thing. It never pays. Oh, no, it's a terrible business to work for. It never, at the end of the week, when you want your paycheck for all the laboring you've done, guess what you end up with? Loss of sleep by staring at the ceiling. All you got a few handful of hours during the night because you're, you're trying to work all the things out in your mind. That's what worry will do. But have you considered today... Have you considered, have you, what would happen if we began in our minds to put the same amount of effort that we use to work on our worry 
and used it to work on our worship. Because here's what I found out. If you got to work, you might as well put worship to work. Because this one pays dividends. This has got great benefits, y'all. I'm telling you right now, this one's got, don't it? It's got good benefits in the end, y'all. It's got great, it's got great benefits at the end when I'm able to worship instead of constantly worry. Because what worship does, it actually dispels your worry instead of develop it. It is pointing the imagination God gave you and putting it in the right direction. Worship begins to help your mind see what is happening spiritually. And what is happening spiritually is this. God is for me. God is with me. God has already worked out. God, if he knows the lilies of the fields and he knows every hair that is on my head, what would tell me possibly that God hasn't possibly considered what's going to happen in my life, what the events that are going to unfold. He holds all things in the power of his hands. And I love him because I don't have to labor. He loves me enough to give himself for me and see me through every day. When I worship like that, y'all, that's something freeing. Come on, that's the benefits of following God that I no longer have to labor any longer. God has already worked it out on my behalf. That's what he says in the the book of Philippians, I love what Paul says. Philippians chapter 4 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. That's what worship is, y'all. And the peace of God, which transcends all, all, all understanding. How am I going to work it out? How's it all going to play out? I don't know what I'm going to do next. It'll transcend all those things and give you an understanding. We'll guard your hearts and your your minds in Christ Jesus. Here's what I'm saying. Worship works if you work it. Come on. Worship works if you work it. Come on. Put that thing to work. Don't put it by the wayside and pick up worry. That thing will leave you in the grave. I'm looking for some people that have made up your mind today. I'm going to work. It might be my first day on the job. I might just be punching a time clock for the right first hour today, but I'm going to work in my worship because I know at the end of my life I'm going to leave with more for my labor than worry will ever leave. Come on somebody, I dare you to stand on your feet right now and just worship him and say I'm going to get to work today. Come on, I'm not going to labor or spin over my situation, but I'm going to worship my God. Worship is for your benefit and for the glory of God. It exalts him in the highest place. It sees him enthroned and holy, glorified above. But then what he does is deposits a peace inside of your soul that you can't find any other place. That's what God does. Man, I feel the presence of God here today. You feel him here today? I hope you can feel it online, but I'm pro- I, I'm, I don't know, man. When you're here in person, you feel it. There's something happening in this place. And I hope you feel it right there in your living room. But what I have found about, sit down, I ain't done. I'm almost done. Here's what I found about wor- worry, how it'll work you. The reason why we always work instead of worship, I'm almost done, is because it comes down to control. I work so hard to figure it out and labor to lay it all out so I can work to control the outcome. But for any of my control freaks out there, like me in life that have tried to labor, I'm going to be honest with you. You ready? Preacher loves you. But the sooner you find this truth out that I'm about ready to say, the more peace you're going to feel inside your spirit. Are you ready? Let this sink deep. You are not in control. 
I wish I was too. I wish I could work it out too. But I, I've noticed in my life, if I was to work it out, I'd leave it a mess. I'm so thankful that God did not let me work it out on my own. How many would agree with me? You don't even know where you would be if you worked it out on your own and you figured it out and you laid it all out because God is the orchestrator of life. Have you ever considered that? But that's what worry, worry does. It'll, it'll, it'll make you control and hold on to things. So the best way I could, I could, I could lay this out to you in life is I, I asked my friend Phil to come up here for a second. Everybody give it up for Phil. Come on, give it up for Phil. Here he comes. The price is right, brother. Run on down here. Da, da, da. Yes. This is my man, Phil. Give it up for Phil one more time. This is for Phil. And, uh, and then my buddy, Kyle, he's actually in a back. You don't, you've never even seen Kyle before. Kyle runs the online sound, sitting in a back room somewhere, turning knobs. All right, give it up for Kyle back there. Wherever you're at, Kyle, we love you. Phil helps run sound here every Sunday along with Carlton. Carlton, they trade off back and forth. And so Phil is running sound today, and I've asked for his help today because uh, you see that thing in his hand? He's got an iPad. It's pretty cool. I'll tell you what it does. Now, most of you, when you hear me speak, oh, um, duh. not yet. Most of you, when you hear me speak, you think that I'm in control. You think I'm the one with the mic on and I've got something to say? But how many know that even though, even though I hold it doesn't mean I control it. Just because I hold the mic doesn't mean I control the mic. Because at any time, whatever I say, it doesn't matter what I say, he's the one. He's the one. He's the one no matter what. I, because he's got a mute button that actually controls the sound. And no matter what I say, it doesn't really matter because he can at any time unmute me or mute me. You know why? Because I don't control it. He controls it. Oh my gosh. I wonder if we would ever come to the conclusion in life that we are holding on to it, but we don't control it. We got a God who controls our life, the end from the beginning. And why in the world would I waste another hour in my life trying to control something that I simply hold on to. I wonder if some of us would stand to our feet this morning and just say, I am thankful today that I hold life, but I'm not in control of it. Come on. Would you give God praise today that he knows it all and he controls it all? And even though I'm holding it, I would actually create the hindrance if I controlled it, because our God has it all. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> Remain standing. I'm almost done. I promise you on that. And then he closed, Jesus closes it out by verse 33. He says this, but seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you as well. So Jesus says, look above. Everybody say, look above. He says, look below. But then he says, look beyond. Your life is nothing but a short breath that is here one minute and gone the next. I was out on the baseball fields yesterday with my kids, which is where we are every weekend. And I'm watching my oldest son play, and he's 13, and yes, he's young because some of you got adult children, but I was thinking to myself, where have the last 13 years gone? It's just, it's gone. And it reminded me, it gave me a perspective that I've got to live for something that's greater than just right now. That's why I make the investments. That's why I've given my life away to ministry. It's because we are a part of something greater than the here and now. We are part of the kingdom of God for those who have accepted Christ and are living for him, a part of something greater. And what Jesus is communicating is sometimes the worry, the anxiety, the fear that we feel is because we got the wrong priorities for what is present. You got to look beyond you 
and see the ultimate redemptive story of what we are a part of. Look beyond. Did you know sometimes that problems and difficulties are not necessarily a bad thing? You know why? Because sometimes problems help get your priorities straight. Priorities will make you seek Him in a situation where you weren't seeking before. And so what he's saying is you got to look beyond yourself and see a greater kingdom at work. Look beyond your own kingdom and place his as a priority. Whatever he wants to do out of your life, how he's maneuvering. Come on, winning people for the kingdom and being the kingdom. When you set him as the priority, that's when you get God's peace. If you're looking for that peace the other day, set him as the priority. And he's given the promise that he'll put everything in its place. If you're worried, if you're anxious, if you're fearful today, look up. If you're overwhelmed today, look below. And if you're fearful, look beyond. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed today. Father, thank you for what you did in this place. We all struggle with worry. We all have fears. We all have anxiety. I pray that we would not be overwhelmed with it. Because your word says that in this life you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. That is the kingdom we are part of. Help us consider the options of how to look this week, God. If if we need provision, help us to turn our eyes upward in prayer, thanking you, praising you, checking our consumption, what we're intaking in our life. If we're overwhelmed this week, help us look below and know that we can have times of, of worship, putting it to work, getting into your presence, pushing away from other things just to get a clear perspective in life. But help us, Lord, to see the right priorities, that it is your kingdom first. That we would tell ourselves, God, whatever you want, we're down with. We won't look beyond our own personal encounters or personal things we're going through, but see the greater priority, which is your kingdom. God, whatever you want, we're going to look beyond ourselves. And then we know, Lord, there's going to be a peace inside of our hearts. Thank you for what you did in this place today. I pray for people who have never received the ultimate peace which comes from you, of knowing you as Savior. If you're here today and you've never accepted Christ, I want to give you this opportunity today to say yes to Him. It'll be the greatest decision you ever made because you'll feel a peace in your life that you've never felt before. Not that everything's going to be perfect, but you serve a God who is If you want to receive him into your heart today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. God, I come to you today, and I admit I have sinned. I've fallen short. I'm worried. I'm anxious. I'm fearful in my life. But, Lord, I believe that's why you sent Jesus, to die on our behalf, to have relationship with God, to have peace. And now I confess my sins. I repent. Come into my heart and my life. In Jesus' name, Lord, would you overwhelm those people who prayed that prayer. Let it be a posture of their heart to really lay it all down before you. And may you give them a peace that they've never sensed before. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, would you give God praise for what he did in this place today? Amen. Come on, do me a favor before you're seated. Look up. Everybody look up. Come on, look down. Then look beyond. Let's do that this week. Amen.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today for our eChurch Online. We're so grateful that you took the time to join us today. If you made a decision for Christ or need prayer, want to know just a little bit more about the church or your relationship with God, we'd love to connect with you. If you could text that number on the bottom of the screen, someone will be reaching out to you to see how we can best serve you. Again, thank you so much for joining us today.